I hope your calculations are correct. Our calculations are always correct, for we are gigantic brains. Hello YouTube, this is DVD Reviews Studios here, and today I'm going to be doing a collection video going over my Futurama DVD box sets. Uh, which Futurama, as far as a TV show is concerned, it's for sure one of my all-time favourite animated shows. But I would, in all honesty, argue it's my absolute favourite TV show of all time. It's a very cohesive story as far as an animated sitcom set in the future is concerned, which is kind of surprising. And it's a show that is very much layered in terms of comedy and something that, as far as creativity is concerned, is full of phenomenal ideas and something that I can't wait to expand upon as we go through each individual season. Um, which is what we shall do to go over the packaging and discuss favourite episodes. Speaking of which, to make things a little bit more interesting, similar to how I did my South Park collection video a couple of years ago, I thought I would do an almost top 10 favourite episodes. I say almost because if I were to do a top 10, I would likely pick uh, multiple episodes from an individual season. But instead, this time around, I'm going to pick a favourite from each of the individual eight seasons and then two of the movies. So that will give us obviously 10 in total. So without further ado, let's go through the seasons chronologically, beginning of course with season one. So first up, of course, is season one, which contains all 13 of the original season one episodes spread across three DVD discs. And as far as the DVD set is concerned, this is probably my favourite in terms of the cover art. Um, there's the three discs listing all the episodes there on the side. There's Leela on the back cover and Fry and Bender on the front cover. And there's so many different variants as far as the actual DVD sets are concerned of these particular box sets. So there are thinner versions which sort of condense the packaging ever so slightly as far as the shelf space is concerned. And there's also a couple of different variants in terms of repackaged and reprinted covers to match the seasons 5 through to 8. And so in all fairness I think the original 4 set designs are my favourites, especially for this spectacular artwork, which is overall fascinating and something that really fascinated me when I was a child. I used to sort of try and draw these kinds of graphics and overall just found it to be really interesting in terms of Matt Groening's design for Futurama compared to The Simpsons. So um, there you go anyway in terms of the individual DVD cases. And so here are the individual DVD covers for the volumes of season one. And in terms of picking a favorite episode from season one, it's not really as difficult as it may seem. And there's loads of great standout episodes, which Space Pilot 3000 sort of cashing in on the new millennium kind of story. Um, from the late 90s, I thought the way they portrayed it by jumping things a thousand years forward was obviously the main grasp of the series, but also a really unique way to portray that level of story structure, which we've seen in The Simpsons. Uh, I noted it recently in King of the Hill, which I've been watching of late. And so as far as the Futurama portrayal is concerned, I thought it was overall a genius and something that was so well written at its core. Um, episodes like I Roommate, sort of developing the character of Fry and having him uh, sort of move in with Bender, the lovable robots, that was a great episode. Jumping on to Volume 2, we have loads of great moments on here as well. Fear of a Bot Planet is very unique in terms of a society of robots that love killing humans. Uh, my Free Sons is a great episode, a big piece of garbage is for sure a standout, but my absolute favourite episode of Season 1 has got to be Hell is of a Robots, introducing us to Bill Zabot himself, the Robot Devil. Robot Hell is quite real! Here's our brochure which I absolutely loved the voice acting of the Robot Devil, which, fun fact, was voiced by Dan Castellaneta, who famously voices Homer Simpson. And so, out of all the Season 1 episodes, why hell is of a robots? As far as the story structure is concerned, is possibly one of my favourites in terms of a Futurama story, especially focusing on Bender as the main character, where Bender is led down a better path of life after finding religion. And I always found it humorous of how he tried so hard to stay on the right path, only obviously to give in to temptation and then come face to face with the robot devil himself. And in terms of story structure, I love the way that is portrayed for Bender as a character, who is obviously guilty of many, 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 many crimes. 
and even the Robot Devil song, that is for sure one of the best musical moments in Western animation as far as I'm concerned. Um, Futurama definitely has its fair share of musical moments. And yeah, as far as the episode goes, if you're looking for an entry-level Futurama episode, that is definitely one that I would recommend that gives you a feel for the show as far as the futuristic value is concerned, but it also gives you a great depth to Bender as a character, which is for sure one of the many reasons why I like it so much. Um, so that is my favourite Season 1 episode, and just topping things off evenly with the third disc, we have A Flight to Remember, which, opposing Hell is of a Robots, is a very evocative episode focusing on a kind of sort of Titanic-based love story featuring Bender. Uh, Mars University is a great episode with the character of Gunter the Monkey. Uh, when Aliens Attack, which is the Omicronian Invasion episode, and then the Fry and the Slam Factory, of course, sort of mimicking the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory storyline. As far as Season 1 goes, I think this is overall a very solid first season, which is essential viewing, of course, and I think each individual episode achieves its end goal of providing a well-written piece of comedy that is not only thought-provoking, but also quite touching in some instances as well, which is a main commodity of Futurama that I adore. And next up, of course, is Season 2, which contains 19 episodes in total, spread over four DVD discs this time. And there's just a general overview of the slipcover, giving some of the secondary characters their sort of front viewing, as it would be, with the Professor, Amy, Hermes, Zoidberg, etc. And uh, removing the slipcover, we have some of the inside artwork, just giving references again to certain episodes, such as Zoidberg's Homeworld. Uh, there's the side there. The President Nixon episode is one of my personal favourites. Again, another Omicronian episode. And there's the four DVD cases with some nice extra artwork there on the spine. And here are the front cover designs for the Season 2 volumes, which I absolutely love. The sort of centerpiece there of Giant Bender versus Giant Zoidberg fighting from the Anthology of Interest episode. I also really love the sort of armor design that Fry has from the War is a Hate Word episode, which was very, very similar to Starship Troopers, thinking about it. And yeah, I just think as far as artwork goes, this really does up the ante on references to episodes. Um, but more importantly, going through the episodes to hopefully reach a favorite, which to be honest, thinking about it, it's come a lot more difficult than what it was for season one to pick a favorite episode, but um, there's loads of great memorable ones that really are quite thought-provoking, such as I Second That Emotion, which is a very interesting backstory for the sewer mutant characters, uh, which I think those, as far as memorable characters go, are some of the absolute best Futurama side characters. Uh, Brannigan, Begin Again, which is a very interesting episode that kind of reminds me of Midnight Cowboy, especially for this kind of get-up that Zap Brannigan goes for in the episode. Uh, Ahead in the Poles, which is for sure one of the best episodes on here, which is where Richard Nixon is running in the presidential polls and literally gains the support of the robot majority by actually buying Bender's body from a pawn shop that Bender sells to a pawn shop for booze money, as he terms it. Volume 2 now, we have some really good episodes on here, particularly for Bender with The Lesser of Two Evils and Raging Bender. And I also quite like a clone of my own, which introduces us to the Professor's clone, Cuba, which is kind of sort of his grandson, almost. Volume 3, uh, a wonderful Hermes episode, which is how Hermes requisitioned his groove back. Requisition me a beat! Uh, Bender gets made, introducing the robot mafia, which are easily some of the best side characters. I absolutely love the Dombot, and uh, especially Clamps, who really comes into his own in the later episodes. And uh, the problem with Poplars, that's another great Omicronian based episode. And Volume 4, which has a couple of the more nostalgic episodes to me personally. The first of which is Anthology of Interest Part 1, which was in fact the first ever full Futurama episode I ever watched. Along with The Honking, where I think it must have been. I must have been about four or five years old, and this episode was shown Christmas Day morning. And I caught the last two or three minutes of it where Bender happens to scream at Fry the words, That was my last beer, you bastard, I'll kill you. 
and my whole family were literally sat around me while I was watching this and obviously they turned the TV off for obvious reason but I still find that humorous just thinking about that in reflection um, as far as the episode goes it's probably one of the best ones on here anyway the story of the wear car which is a unique storyline and uh, yeah as far as picking a favorite episode goes it's certainly going to be a tough one for season two However, going back to Volume 1, I think I'm going to have to pick the episode Ahead in the Poles, which, although, again, another Bender episode, this episode intrigues me in particular for the portrayal of Richard Nixon as almost, in, at this point, really a satirical fictional character, of which Nixon manages to win the presidential poll election by being ahead by gathering the robot vote majority, simply by having a robot body. Nixon's back! And the ending to this episode as well, where he has a full-on Transformer-style body after Bender does get his body back, is definitely one of my favourite Futurama moments. Next up, of course, is Season 3, which this one is, yet again, a four-disc set, this time with 22 episodes in total. And I love the way the sleeve actually matches up with the underneath artwork, putting the three main characters in the spacesuits. So there you go, there's the side there with Freund Zoidberg, and Bender and the Professor there on the other side. And there's the spines for the four individual DVD cases. And here is the artwork spread across the four individual volumes for Season 3. So there's Leela there, there's Fry, the giant bender from one of the absolute best episodes of Futurama ever, Godfellas. And there's Amy there on Volume 4. And so looking through the episodes on this DVD set, I would arguably say this is really where the show peaked in terms of episode quality. Uh, as far as these episodes go, these are some of my overall absolute favourites and some of the best and most rewatchable episodes of Futurama. Um, examples of favourites on here, Parasite's Lost is definitely one of the best ones, where Fry literally ends up with worms and so he infiltrates his own internal organs to fight and destroy the worms that are really oddly actually making his body more progressively better and enhancing him as a person. Uh, a Tale of Two Santas is a wonderful story as well, quite a dark and sadistic Christmas theme, which pretty much all the Christmas tales from Futurama have, and uh, this is basically where Bender takes the place of Robot Santa, the evil Robot Santa. And uh, I absolutely love the look of the Friarish as well, which has some great callbacks uh, to Fry's past, along with some of my favourite movie references, such as The Breakfast Club. And for disc two, we have some really great episodes on here as well, such as The Day the Earth Stood Stupid, which really enhances the character of Nibbler and adds a huge personality to that character. Likewise with Fry and tying things back to the pilot episode, which is interesting. And uh, one of my absolute all-time favorite episodes is Insane in the Mainframe, which gave us the character of Roberto, the criminally insane robot voiced by David Herman, of all people. And this episode is great, where we see Fry stuck in a robot insane asylum. And one of my absolute favorites as well is The Root of All Evil, which gives a lot of insight to the characters of Cuba, who is Professor Farnsworth's clone, and Dwight, who is the son of Hermes, as they basically have an incredibly successful paper round that suddenly overtakes the Planet Express business, which is overall insanely brilliant. For Disc 3, we definitely have some of the best and overall some of the most rewatchable episodes, in my opinion. In particular, with Bending in the Wind, where Bender is literally immobilized and discovers a love and passion for music only to then pair up with Beck and do live stage performances with him, which was quite unique. And another great episode is A Pharaoh to Remember, where Bender basically feels unwanted and unappreciated, and so for him to feel appreciated whilst they're uh, making a delivery to Osiris IV, which is a very Egyptian-style planet, Bender unintentionally becomes the new Pharaoh and has a ginormous statue built of him, which is supposed to basically make him feel better about himself. Remember me! 
And it was quite humorous to see Bender basically learn a lesson from his own actions. And for disc four with episodes such as Anthology of Interest Part 2, which is a shame that there was no more of these episodes from the season onwards, although you could potentially argue that the format was really revived and revisited with episodes such as Nature Armor as an example in some of the later revival episodes. Uh, Roswell, That Ends Well, was a phenomenal time travel story, which I absolutely adored, where the characters basically go back in time to Roswell and create the Roswell incident, as I'll term it. Godfellas, which is one of the most phenomenal television episodes of any series, as far as I'm concerned, where Bender accidentally becomes a god and meets basically what Futurama conceive as the god, which is quite unique in terms of its story properties. And I absolutely love as well another Bender episode, the 30% Iron Chef, where Bender competes against the TV cook Elzar in the realm of Futurama, trying to compete and win against him in a contest. And in terms of picking a favourite episode, it's even more difficult than it was for Season 2 with Season 3. And I'll be honest, I was going to pick Godfellas, but I'm just going to write that off as a given because I genuinely think that is one of the most perfect television show episodes ever. Um, and it would, again, just be another Bender-related episode, just like my first two picks. So instead, I'm going to go with Insane in the Mainframe, which I think is a wonderful Fry-related episode. And although Bender is very heavily involved in this episode, I think Roberto, as a side character, really does steal the show as this being his introductory episode. Now stand back, I gotta practice my stabbing! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, please! <laughs> And there's so many wonderful moments with that character onward from this episode. So as far as introducing such an iconic character to Futurama, and for Fry's a very pitiful story of being stuck in a robot insane asylum, I'm definitely picking this as my third season choice. And next up is season four, which this has 18 episodes in total across the four discs. And this was in fact the first Futurama DVD set I ever got. Uh, I got this for Christmas many, many, many years ago. And I believe this came from a store in the UK called Woolworths, which this box set is very nostalgic to me just because I used to run into Woolworths and always just look at this particular set. And I think it was the cover art that drew me to it, although basic, it was the fact that you could remove the slipcover to reveal x-ray versions of the characters beneath. So there's Fry, Leela on the spine there, and there is Bender, and your list of episodes there, of course. And then removing the slipcover, we have x-ray versions of Frybender and Leela there. So there you go, and then there is the spine and then the artwork for the four DVD cases here is from the episode Teenage Mutant Leela Hurdles. And here is your artwork design for the front covers of the four volumes for season four. And for season four we begin with some of the more stranger episodes overall. Uh, with Kif gets knocked up a notch where Kif is pregnant with Amy's children. Yeah, I said that right. That's a very strange episode and is really more about the parenting side of things overall. But it's still a very bizarre concept to obviously have a role reversal in terms of who becomes, in a sense, the mother. <laughs> Um, next up is Leela's Homeworld, which gives a heck of a lot of insight to Leela's past as a character, since her past is very shaded within the first three seasons. And then we come to learn that she was in fact a mutant offspring from a pair of sewer mutants, and she was given up for adoption to give her a much better life than what she would have had in the sewers, since mutants are not allowed on the Earth's surface, which is such a strange concept, which is funnily enough explored in the Revival series, which we will get to shortly. Less Than a Hero, where Leela and Fry engineer their DNA unintentionally with Miracle Cream that gives them superpowers. And A Taste of Freedom, which is a wonderful Zoidberg episode, Hooray! where Zoidberg, in celebration of Freedom Day, eats the Earth flag, and is actually then sentenced to be killed for doing such an action which is considered treasonous which then starts almost as you could term it a war between Zoidberg species of the Decapodians and Earth of course which ends in a very well animated battle 
And for disc two, we have, again, some very iconic episodes on this particular disc, with episodes such as Jurassic Bark. <laughs> yes, everyone, cue the tears. It's Fry's Dog's episode. Oh man, Seymour the Dog has really become not only a meme, I suppose you could say, but this is definitely a heart-wrenching episode for those that stick around to the very, very end. Although, in a way, this is kind of sort of undone by Bender's big score for that very one quick take moment. Um, but I guess that's something that we can kind of disregard in context, since this is a case of Fry trying to revive his long fossilized dog by cloning him, only to then not go through with the process without actually realizing that Fry's dog wondered where Fry was for all the time that he was frozen and decided to wait outside of Fry's old job, Panucci's Pizza, and waited his entire life until he died. And Fry obviously was never there. Oh my god, it's worse than I thought! <laughs> I don't blame you for crying either. Teenage Mutant Leela Hurdles, which is a very unique episode of the professor trying to de-age himself by experimenting with certain treatments. And one of my favorite episodes, The Why of Fry, which continues off of the story stem that we were granted in The Day the Earth Stood Stupid in the previous season, with Nibbler once again enlisting Fry in the help of destroying the gigantic brains. Disc 3, I would arguably say, has some of the more forgettable episodes. Where No Fan Has Gone Before was one that I always skipped over when I was a lot younger. I never really appreciated it, but obviously now, in my adult years, I can really appreciate what Futurama did by literally bringing back the original cast of the original Star Trek series. Uh, the Sting, which is by far the best episode in this particular list, um, which is overall a really trippy episode, showing the liminality between life and death and the conscious and unconscious mind for both Fry and Leela, and it's a very uncomfortable episode showing Leela basically struggling with the idea that she might have more or less had Fry killed, which is for sure one of the most unbalanced episodes for Leela as a character. And finally for disc 4 we have the Farnsworth Parabox, which is arguably one of the most iconic Futurama episodes with the alternate universe style characters, and the bizarre concept of there being a whole universe retained within the confines of a cardboard box. Uh, 300 Big Boys, which is a great episode, and a great character-based episode, actually, which gives a unique insight into what would a Futurama character do if given $300, at which point the $300 is basically just a government sort of tax refund. And so it's unique to show what each individual character plans to do with that kind of money. So Fry spends $300 on 100 cups of coffee as an example. And the last episode of the original Futurama run, The Devil's Hands Are Idle Playthings, which was a wonderfully written episode mainly revolving around Fry trying to win Leela's heart through the power of music, only to discover that he is rubbish at the musical instrument, the holophone, which he just cannot play with his human hands. And so he makes a deal with the devil to enlist the fact that he should have robot hands to use this instrument. And I love the back and forth between the robot devil and Fry arguing over when he should return the robot devil's hands. And as far as a, a, an ending goes, an ending, since obviously this wasn't the ending, it was a great finale. Anyhow, as far as picking a favourite episode for Season 4 goes, I would genuinely pick The Devil's Hands Are Idle Playthings. It's a great episode exploring Fry's passion and his exploration of wanting to be in a relationship with Leela, and that's what makes this show so much more credible compared to other animated sitcoms, and how the characters really do actually progress in terms of their needs and desires, and this utilized the characters wonderfully for a finale episode that they thought would be the last episode. And thankfully, it was not. And so, as far as Futurama's relationship with Fox was concerned, Fox, as a studio, stopped purchasing episodes of Futurama going forward, resulting in, of course, the inevitable cancellation with The Devil's Hands or Idle Playthings, being the last episode of Futurama to air in 2003, 
And that was basically it for Futurama, since obviously there was to be no more, or so we thought, since Matt Groening and Comedy Central were rumoured a few years later to be in talks to revive the show. And when I got hold of the Simpsons movie DVD for Christmas the year it came out, I was absolutely ecstatic to see that there was actually a trailer on this DVD set for the first of four straight-to-DVD movies, Futurama Bender's Big Score. And this was one heck of a revival as far as a elongated episode-style movie was concerned. This was something that was completely unexpected to, I think, nine-year-old me at the time. And as far as it goes, overall, this was just an absolutely incredible revival story to bring the characters back that were so beloved. And to see them basically in their original format with just more adventures to come in the not-too-distant future. With obviously the promise of an additional three movies coming out as well. Uh, but just primarily focusing on Bender's Big Score for a brief moment, as far as this story in particular goes... This really did have everything, and for a while was basically my favourite movie. It had wonderful comedy moments, it had a great explanation for the revival going off of the final episode from the fourth season DVD set. And as far as the story went, it was great to see time travel utilised in Futurama, loads of great callbacks to episodes such as Space Pilot 3000 and Jurassic Bark. And it was wonderful to see an interesting love-style storyline between the character of Leela and Lars, which had a great plot twist. So this movie, as far as it goes, really did have everything, including a very interesting cliffhanger finale. Well, we're boned! And this takes us into The Beast with a Billion Backs, following the space-time rip that happens due to the excessive time travel in Bender's Big Score, we now have a rip into an alternative universe where there's only one dwelling known creature called Yevo. And Yevo, having been explored by Fry, who literally just leaves this universe due to his crippling loneliness and unfulfilled fling with Leela, Fry actually goes into this alternative universe and discovers what you could really term as true love almost, only it's a falsified reality where Yevo as an alien basically assimilates Fry and then assimilates every known organism in the known universe, which is such a bizarre concept. And the way they treat it as a romance slash horror hybrid genre, it's a very uncomfortable watch in some instances, and it's definitely the most unrewatchable in terms of the straight to DVD movies, and probably my least favourite of the four. One thing that I do quite like about this DVD set is the special features on here, in particular the Lost Adventure, as they term it, which is basically a revamped version of the 3D Futurama video game from 2003, where they merge some of the cutscenes and some gameplay to make a 30 minute episode. And having never played the game, it really did look like a lot of fun, so I did pick up a copy of it for Xbox, and boy was that a challenging game, especially the Zoidberg level. I spent way too much time trying to beat that, and eventually I did. Um, it's a very fun game if you haven't played it. I would definitely recommend checking it out. It's obviously very old school in terms of its mechanics, but it still holds up, I feel, and if you're not interested, you can always watch The Lost Adventure. And the last two straight-to-DVD feature films are, of course, Bender's Game and Into the Wild Green Yonder, which Bender's Game was one that I didn't really think too much of when I first watched it. However, I would now arguably say this is definitely the most rewatchable and is actually my favourite out of all four of the DVD films, which I really do quite like this for the fantasy elements. And combining the fantasy genre with the beloved characters of Futurama, and because of their unique styles, this is actually a blend that really does merge quite well to my surprise. And the storytelling elements that fit into the fantasy complex in terms of a story, it really does work with Mom being the villain, Fry representing a very sort of bizarre style of... Gollum character giving a load of references to the Lord of the Rings franchise. 
Bender and his so-called insanity in this movie being the reason why this fantasy world even exists to begin with. I love the story stages in this film and what it represents from the fantasy side of things and what that creates for the real world in terms of cause and effect. And that was quite a surprising detour for this film in particular, and that's what I really did quite like about it. And the very last of the feature films was Into the Wild Green Yonder, which once again, this was supposed to act as a conclusive end to Future Armor in terms of the absolute entire show. Which I'm very glad it wasn't, because this ending was basically just a case of putting all our beloved characters together in one place and pushing them through a wormhole just to roll to credits, which wasn't really much of an ending, but in terms of what it represented, it was just a very easy way to put a hiatus on the characters without doing anything significant to them. And I do appreciate that value, because obviously with the Rebirth episode that we get in Season 5, that was definitely a great sort of stepping stone from this finale. And I do appreciate it that little bit more for that first episode, which was quite dark in some instances for the revival run of TV episodes. But as far as what this movie represented, it was basically a conservation style movie, basically trying to preserve and save a wildlife that was being unnecessarily destroyed. And a side story to that was Fry being tasked with once again saving the universe in a similar vein to how he saved the universe previous times from the giant brains as an example. And he was supposed to take on the Dark Ones which were basically a mystery that was kept throughout the entirety of this feature film until the very end where it was very quickly unraveled. But other than that, this movie is okay. It doesn't really serve too much purpose. It's just another fun adventure and doesn't really have too much of a mainstay in terms of how it holds up with the rest of what we have in the consecutive format of Future Armor as a consecutive sort of serialized style story formation. But other than that, I do appreciate its existence, and it's definitely standing tall in terms of comedy, and that's definitely the main draw for this. I think story's a little bit weaker, but the comedic moments are definitely much better than some of the other movies that they've done for Future Armor. And so now to pick two favourites, which would be kind of obvious going off of my thoughts on these straight-to-DVD films. Yes, it is indeed Bender's Big Score, which is a wonderful time travel romance story, and Bender's Game, which is a wonderful fantasy style story with excellent comedic timing, and both of these I think are absolutely incredible additions to Futurama's legacy, and definitely the most rewatchable out of all four of these movies. And so this leads us comfortably into the revival run with Comedy Central of Futurama, and this consisted of four individual runs of 13 episodes each. And so this being termed as season 5 for the DVD releases, this follows up the movies and gives us a continuation onwards from those events. And so this being only a two disc set, like I said we have 13 episodes on here in total. And in terms of a favourite episode, it's actually surprisingly very easy for this particular set. Uh, but just going through a couple of favourites, Rebirth, like I mentioned before, is a very interesting episode for a continuation on from Into the Wild Green Yonder, uh, which got very dark in some instances and was just a very bizarre reintroduction to the show. Um, Attack of the Killer App is one of my absolute favourite modern episodes of Futurama. Obviously, a huge satire on Apple products in general. The late Philip J. Fry, which is one of the most powerful and heart-wrenching episodes of the show overall as far as I'm concerned. It's an episode of love and loss in a sense where Fry is supposed to meet Leela for a birthday dinner and instead gets swept up with the Professor and Bender testing the Professor's forwards-only time machine. And the three of them end up going way too far forward in error and get stuck in the way distant future. And Leela just thinks that she's been stood up and is obviously very confused about the disappearance of the three characters and basically hates Fry for this duration until Fry accidentally manages to get a message to her. And from there she spends the rest of her life regretting the moments that she didn't share with Fry. 
And the way they actually conclude this episode by pushing time all the more further forward to then redo the universe, I love that concept and the way they actually executed that for the episode in such a short amount of time. They made it overall one of the most heartwarming episodes at the very end of it, which I absolutely loved. And then for Disc 2, there's some more great episodes, such as A Clockwork Origin Testing, The Theory of Evolution. And the last episode, the Futurama Holiday Spectacular, is the beginning of the episodes that were very similar to Anthology of Interest, with there being three mini-stories in one long episode. And here is Season 6, of course, which is presented in the same formation style as Season 5. Another 13 episodes spread across two DVD discs. And here is the inside cover. With the list of all 13 episodes here that are included. And we definitely have some interesting ones for this roundup. Um, in particular, the beginning episode, The Silence of the Clamps, where Bender testifies against the robot mafia and actually goes into a witness protection program only for clamps to infiltrate Planet Express to try and find what has happened to Bender. And this features an excellent standoff between Zoidberg and clamps and actually drops the first and only F-bomb of the entire show's run, which is bleeped, but it was still very unexpected and actually really funny to come from Zoidberg of all characters. John! Zoidberg. Mobius Dick, which is basically a parody of Moby Dick. Law and Oracle, which is a parody of Minority Report, with some excellent Tron references in there as well. All the President's Heads, which is once again another overly complicated time travel storyline where the American Revolution is actually reset. And my absolute favourite episode on here is, of course, Over Clockwise where Cuba upgrades Bender by giving him an extra processor or overclocking him, as it's termed to make him better at video games, only for this to become an addictive section of his personality, for him to keep overclocking himself, just so then he can gain more processing power to the point where he actually becomes an omnipotent godlike figure which was, in terms of an episode structure, absolutely hilarious and really did work in terms of a story structure and was surprisingly intended to be a conclusive end to Futurama in one way or another from what I've read. So that's an interesting bit of trivia there for sure. Next up, of course, is Season 7, which began the DVD sets that actually had slipcovers, which was a nice touch for the singular DVD release sets. Uh, it's a shame Season 5 and 6 obviously did not have that. And uh, in terms of extra inclusions as well, both Season 7 and 8 came with some character art cards. So there is the DVD set. Of course, another two-disc set with another 13 episodes included. And these were the art cards, which I will show all of these at the end together. And in terms of the episodes featured on this DVD set, we have uh, another interesting opening episode, which was The Bots and the Bees, where Bender and a robot soda machine have a child together, which is completely unbelievable. A Farewell to Arms, which was to coincide with the end of the Mayan calendar, prophesizing the end of the world, where the ending of the world was supposed to happen in 2012. In this instance, it's the ending of a Martian calendar with the world ending in 3012. Um, speaking of which, Decision 3012, this was an absolutely incredible episode uh, of time travel once again being incorporated into the story where a future man goes back to the past to run for president to stop a alternative future of destruction happening under the reign of Nixon as the president of the Earth. And in terms of picking a favourite, Decision 3012 definitely stands out as a really intriguing Leela-based episode, for sure. Zap Dingbat, where Zap Brannigan actually dates Leela's mother, which is an interesting concept. The Six Million Dollar Mon, where Hermes upgrades his body with robot attachments. Near Death Wish, which is a really disturbing episode, in fact, where the Professor has quite the awful childhood backstory, as we actually meet his parents for the first time, which is an interesting touch. 
And another unique episode on here which I quite liked was Viva Mars Vegas, where the Martian Las Vegas sort of knockoff is actually heisted by the crew of Planet Express to pay back the robot mafia. And the final season now, season 8, with Hypnotoad featured there on the front cover. And once again, it's another two-disc set with 13 episodes included. And here are the two DVD discs. And once again, another set of art cards which we shall look through at the very end of this video. And going through this last batch of episodes, there are some really fun and imaginative ones for the final season. Uh, a couple of favourites and standout ones of mine, 2D Blacktop, uh, where Professor Farnsworth actually gets incredibly competitive in a street racing gang, of all things, using the Planet Express to win street races. Fry and Leela's Big Fling, which is a really creepy episode where Fry and Leela end up on this vacation planet, only to find out that this so-called resort that they're on is actually a human section in a zoo. Saturday Morning Fun Pit, another episode in the same vein as the Anthology of Interest episodes, which is basically a parody of typical Saturday morning cartoons in the same style as Hanna-Barbera as an example. Game of Tones, which really reminded me of Inception, where Nibbler actually helps Fry coordinate through his dreams to locate a certain tone or melody which is slowly getting closer to Earth from a mysterious alien source. Stench and Stenchability, which is a really heartwarming Zoidberg episode, where Zoidberg actually falls in love, and the person he is in love with is mutually in love with him, which is completely unbelievable. And finally, the finale episode, Meanwhile, which basically sets Futurama in a continuous loop, which I love as a concept and is overall a great finale episode, basically focusing on the relationship between Fry and Leela, which was the complete on-again, off-again story throughout the entirety of Futurama. And so a favourite from the final season, I'm definitely going to go with Stench and Stenchability. It's about time Zoidberg had a fun episode that didn't end in tears. Good as new. Oh! And if the show were to ever continue, I would love to see the character of Marianne become a mainstay in the show with Zoidberg. That would be a really nice touch. And as promised, here are the art cards that came included with Season 7 and Season 8 of the show. And these were basically mimicking the remastered covers from Seasons 1 through to 4 for the first batch. And then, of course, matching 5 through to 8 for the second batch. And so that's going to do it for this extended look at my Futurama DVD box set collection. I really do hope you have enjoyed this video. Futurama as a television show, like I've said in this video multiple times, it's probably, if not my all-time favourite TV show. And as far as an animated sitcom goes... I don't think there's anything that comes close to beating something like Futurama that really does have, oddly, quite a serialized storyline and is overall really fun animated entertainment that I would definitely recommend to all audiences. And if you haven't already watched this show, definitely check out some of the episodes that I've mentioned as favorites. Some of them do coincide with other episodes, so do bear that in mind, but certain episodes I definitely think are great for introductory purposes. But otherwise, I definitely recommend watching the show if you haven't seen any of it before in the chronological order it is delivered in. So if you did enjoy this video, please do leave a like down below and drop me a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite Futurama episode is out of all 140 episodes of the show. And if you do like this video concept idea going through my collection overviews, I do have a collection video looking through seasons 1 through to 19 of South Park. And in a similar video style to this, I shall be looking through my Simpsons box set, so that'll be seasons 1 through to 20. So for more content like this, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Are you threatening me?